Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be exploring the menu system of the Sony A6100. Let's go. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we are continuing our series on the shooting menu for the Sony 6100. We're going piece by piece through the menu system uh, here. And if this is the first link that you've clicked on, please do note that we have previous videos on the uh, other parts of the shooting menu that we've already covered and on the quick menu. And so please do check those out if you're trying to cover all of the shooting controls in order. Before we jump into it, as always, everything we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online, where we believe in teaching the essential skills so that everybody can create beautiful visual art with cameras and photography equipment. We have a four hour introduction to photography class. We we have books, we have free downloads. I encourage you to go check it out. But without further ado, here is our continuing uh, exploration of the menu for the Sony 6100. On page four, we start with silent shooting. And a couple things have to be true for silent shooting. We can't use a flash with it. Uh, we also were in a video mode there, so we do need to change that into a stills mode because we're leaving video options. And silent shooting is a stills option, so any still shooting mode here, we should be able to do it. And it's just being able to turn it on and off. A couple caveats, it cannot operate a flash. We do risk rolling shutter, uh, but we can shoot completely silently using the electronic shutter mechanism. And so this is where that mode is. I've actually set it up on my cameras as a button as well because I like going in and out of it relatively frequently. The next option is electronic front curtain. And this is where we start with the shutter mechanism up and we finish the exposure with the shutter mechanism closing. And this is what I use whenever I'm not in silent shooting mode. I can still trigger a flash. I don't risk rolling shutter and I find it to be just that little bit faster. And there's literally half as much wear and tear on my shutter mechanism. So I do use this pretty much exclusively when I'm not in a silent shooting mode. Uh, next, there are going to be two major options about whether or not we can shoot a picture. The first one is release without a lens on the camera. Um, we leave this usually disabled unless we've got a reason to check if the camera is operating properly and we need to try uh, snapping the shutter and looking at it, in which case we would enable it. Lastly is release without card. I would never have this turned on. This is actually a feature for people who work in stores to show a camera so that it can be demonstrated and fired without having a memory card inside of every camera. Once you own a camera, you should always disable this so that you can never shoot pictures for an afternoon and then realize you forgot to put a memory card into the camera. So make sure that you set that appropriately. And our last option is just the stabilization, on or off. On whenever you're hand holding and a shutter speed lower than a 1 2500th of a second. Off if you're on a tripod or if your shutter speed is a 2500th of a second or faster. Because those two circumstances uh, can negatively affect uh, whether or not steady shot is going to actually work against you and blur your images. All right, we're to page five, which has to do with uh, zoom settings. Um, and the first one has to do only if you have a lens that has an actual electronic zooming mechanism on it, which I didn't uh, at this time. So it's going to tell me here, hey, you can't do that uh, invalid with this lens. But that's just uh, being able to set it, whether or not that rocker switch operates on it uh, for zooming. The second one really is, is important. And this is um, turning on different forms of digital zoom. So we always default optical zoom first, and then it gives us capacity to uh, zoom digitally into the image, which is just cropping in. And then the camera can interpolate in additional pixels, uh, which they call clear image zoom. I never trust them on that. If I'm going to crop an image, I'm going to crop an image. Uh, and I can interpolate with software after the fact. So I would just leave this straight up at optical zoom only and really not mess too much with anything on, uh, on this particular page. Um, I've never found a lot of benefit in doing so. Okay, we're on page six, and we start with this display button. So the question is not, what does the display button do? Because it's always going to change display options. The question is, what options are inside of the display button? Because if there's one that you literally never use, you can turn it off and never see it, because these always cycle through in one order 
over and over again. And if one's just in the way, you can get rid of it. So we would go in to the display button. We're going to have two options, monitor and finder. So the question is, when looking through the viewfinder, how many options do you get? And that can be different than the ones when you're looking at the screen, or what they call the monitor. So let's go into one of these here. I think we want to go into monitor. And you get all these options. We can check mark if we want this option uh, to cycle in and out for us. The one that I'm always making sure that I have turned on is histogram. I really can't shoot without it. Um, and this is one that people might turn off, which is uh, this for viewfinder, which just shows you the data and not the actual image. You've got to look through the viewfinder to actually frame it. And this is a battery saving feature. Uh, for me, um, I can just look through the viewfinder in order to do this shoot, so I could take it or leave it. Um, but uh, put in and take out whatever it is that helps you shoot more effectively and leave in only the ones that are really useful to you. Um, one thing we're going to notice here, by the way, is we're going to go into the viewfinder and we're going to see that there are fewer options. And the reason is we can't have that option of just the data uh, with this. We've got to be able to frame the shot. And so there are fewer options to choose from in the viewfinder than on the monitor just because of the requirements of these two different systems. So we can just turn it on and off very, very simply. So next is going to be this finder monitor. It's disabled because I'm running this camera through a, uh, an external recorder at the time. But this is whether or not it switches automatically when you put your eye up to the viewfinder or if it's always viewfinder or always screen. You get to make that choice. I just can't show it to you while recording through an external recorder. But it's just those three options inside of there. So uh, next we're going to have Zebra settings. Uh, now Zebra settings are there to show you if you are about to overexpose an area of the frame. And it does this by showing the overexposed or about to be overexposed area with a white and black zebra pattern. Now I cannot show you this because it turns off uh, whenever you're running through an external recorder. So uh, I can turn this on but I wouldn't be able to display it. Um, but I can tell you about it. The zebra display is just on and off. And so whether or not you see it or not. And then the level is how sensitive it is. It starts at 70 and it moves up. And we can make this more sensitive so that it's showing areas that still have information but are about to be overexposed. I like to turn this relatively low, 70, 75, if I'm using it. And the reason is I don't want to be confused on how much of a correction I need to make. Uh, but the choice is yours on what's going to be the most useful setting to you. So next is going to be grid lines, and this is just for framing purposes. It's similar to what we talked about with video, where we could have a guide that we could have turned on or off to be able to frame the shot, but it's for still shooting as well. So a rule of thirds grid, or just squares, or a square that actually has diagonals inside of it as well. However you like to frame your shot, if this is helpful in placing your subjects, then this is just that little superimposed guide that goes right on top, which is nice. Now, exposure set guide is not a great term for this next thing. It's actually a setting that shows you um, your variety of shutter speed and apertures right next to each other on the bottom of the screen when you're shooting that gives you an idea of what your other exposure decisions could be to achieve the same effect. So it really helps you learn di how different exposure uh, combinations can still provide the same level of overall brightness in your final exposure. So next is something that a lot of people will never touch until they get into studio lighting, and that's called live view display, uh, which I, I don't love that term. It's a little bit too generic for me, and uh, it's called setting effect on and setting effect off. Here's what it is. Uh, Panasonic calls this constant preview. Um, I like to call it WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, uh, and that is whether or not it is showing you in your viewfinder and on your screen what the brightness of your final exposure is going to be. If it is previewing that for you, that is setting effect on. If it's just showing you a generically bright image independent of what your actual shot will look like, that's setting effect off. This uh, is something that we really don't touch until we start working with lighting equipment, particularly 
if we are working with manual lighting equipment. If we're working with manual lighting equipment, then it has no ability to preview what your shot will look like. And you just look at this completely black frame and it's nearly impossible to work with and get the image that you want. So in those situations, we turn the setting effect off so that we can frame the shot, fire it, and then examine our results and adjust from there. Uh, in those situations, it's incredibly powerful. By the way, if you're working with TTL uh, lighting equipment, it actually doesn't need to do this. It just automatically turns the setting effect off when it notices it's working with TTL lights. It's only manual lights where I've had that problem and needed to be able to adjust it. So next is uh, review time. So how long do we review images when we press play? And it's two second, five second, or 10 second. So pretty easy uh, choice here. And that's auto review, by the way. Um, so auto review when you've all just taken a picture. Now we're on to page eight. And we are going to take a look at how we change what the buttons uh, do in this camera, uh, which is really powerful. Now that you've gone through the whole menu with me, you can set up the functionality of your camera to only the things that you're going to change the most often, which is very uh, useful. So we start with custom key for shooting pictures. And you know it's pictures because it's a little frame. It's got the mountains. Uh, the next ones down, by the way, are going to be custom keys when you're shooting video, and that's when you're in video mode. And lastly, is going to be custom key when you're playing back uh, pictures or video, meaning that the same button can do one of three things depending on what you're doing at the time. So if I want to change what a button does, I go into custom key. We're going to do this for stills uh, first. And what I can do is scroll around and notice that it's showing me a button on the back of the camera and highlighting the one I'm talking about. And then it tells me what it's doing right now. So right now, button number one uh, is an auto exposure lock hold. And button number two, which is uh, referenced at the bottom, is white balance. And we're highlighting button one. And so I can scroll around uh, through four pages that describe every button on the camera and see what they're all set to right now. And that gives me a lot of power. So here I went into uh, the button that actually sits on lenses. So if you have a lens that has a focus uh, lock button, that's what it was originally programmed for. Um, so it's oftentimes called the focus lock button, but it can be almost anything you want. I've got 21 pages of things that that button can do. And so now using the left and right uh, toggles on the wheel, I can scroll through everything that can be a button accessible feature. Uh, notice I said button accessible feature, by the way. Um, and the reason for that is that some features really don't lend themselves to buttons. They need to actually uh, go through more of a, a function menu type of setting. And so you're going to see uh, that the list for things we can do with buttons and the list of things we can do with the function menu are of different lengths. And that's the reason why. Uh, and I can set it to whatever I want it to be, any feature pretty much that we have discussed. So if I go into custom key for shooting video, uh, I get a very similar range of options. But notice that everything is right now set, button one, follow custom for shooting stills. So it defaults so that video uh, uh, functionality is the same as stills functionality. But you can differentiate that. Uh, for instance, you can have a button that uh, changes your audio level, but you would only ever need that when shooting video. So it can be a button that is a video feature if you wanted to set something up like that. Same thing, we can scroll through the uh, buttons on the camera and decide. And we can do something similar with playing back. Uh, now, one thing I'd like to point out that I do like to set up as a custom key when shooting stills is a ratings button, uh, where you can set up a button to rate zero through five stars, whatever image you're reviewing. This rating carries forward into your photo editing software. I find this to be a very powerful way of shortcutting my editing if I want to find a particular image after I have shot it. So I would set up a button for that uh, out of the box. But I can scroll through here. There's six pages of things that I could set a button to uh, in playback. So that's a little bit shorter, but they all have to do with playing back images or sending them to smartphones or what have you. So next is the function menu uh, setup. And you're going to notice it just pulls up what your function menu looks like. Every item in order. 
and we could go through and choose any of these to change if we wanted to. And I oftentimes do because I don't like something to be duplicated as a button and in my function menu. But that's me personally as a shooter. How you set up your camera is going to be very personal. And I encourage you to really make it your own because that's a fun thing. So notice here that my function menu um, has only 14 sets of options inside of it. Uh, so it's a different amount of things that we can actually use, as we mentioned before. But I could set um, many features, anything that I've ever really wanted uh, to be a function menu, something I can get to very, very quickly. So next is going to be deal while, uh, dial wheel setup. And notice it's just flip-flopping if the back wheel and the top-up dial do uh, shutter speed and aperture or aperture and shutter speed. Just reverse which one does which. Whatever you like, set it the way that it, it just kind of is convenient for you, the way you think it should be. Make it that way. All right. Lastly is going to be whether or not one of those will do exposure compensation in a non-manual mode. Um, I leave this off, um, which is really just uh, kind of a byproduct of me shooting in manual exclusively. If you find it to be helpful, you can easily do this and show an aperture priority. Uh, we could set up the top-up dial to be aperture and the wheel to be exposure compensation or whatever you would like. You can make that uh, the way that the camera will perform for you so that you can be faster. So lastly, uh, we're getting into page nine here. So the first option here is the function of the touch operation. And really that's just saying when you're using the touch to pull focus or to decide point of focus, because you'll never hear me refer to this as a touch screen. It's a touch to move focus and crosshair. It's really all that the touch capability of the screen is good for. Um, the question is what focusing area are we using? And I like to use a smaller uh, focusing area. Uh, area rather than a larger one personally. And so I've found that the single point it defaults to uh, works well for me. The next is going to be the movie button. What does the movie button do? You'll, if you notice, going through uh, our last page, changing the buttons, it doesn't give you the option of changing the movie button. The movie button will always shoot video. This is the only thing it can do. But the question is, if I'm in a non-movie mode, such as auto or manual exposure or whatever, can I shoot video? Will it let me shoot video? Or do I have to be in the movie mode at the dial at the top of the camera for the movie button to actually start a video clip? Um, I did have a camera where uh, I kept accidentally hitting the video button. It was on the side of the camera uh, and starting a video clip on accident. So I actually did make this movie mode only. I haven't had that problem when I switched to my new camera where it's inset. Uh, but your experience with your camera should dictate whether or not this is useful for you. All right. So our next option is the wheel lock. And so uh, this is actually locking that so it doesn't change any values. Um, and if you have a problem with where you take your camera out of your camera bag and it spins a dial as you're taking it out um, just by hitting it against the uh, bag or just with your thumb and you want that to stop, you can lock uh, the wheel so that it doesn't change any values until you unlock it. Uh, so that's what that is for. And our last option is audio signals. And this is just, it does it beep at you when uh, it has uh, focused. Is it making any sound that is completely arbitrary? And this is the second part of true silent shooting is turning this off. Um, I don't like additional audio signals. I don't need them. Some people find it very strange to focus without any auditory feedback from the camera. They kind of like that as a as a background kind of uh, reminder, yes, I'm in focus, uh, but it's whatever is convenient uh, for you and the way that you like to shoot. So that is the end of the shooting menu, uh, or second tab of the shooting menus in the Sony a6100. Um, thank you for joining me for all of these videos. Uh, we went through a whole lot of information. We went through a whole lot of features and functions over the course of the menu exploration and the function menu exploration. Um, I hope that you uh, stick with me here uh, at Camera Lessons Online and uh, enjoy using your camera. And as always, thanks for joining um, me here and thanks for being part of the conversation.